Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Antoine, and this is Help for the Guiltless. I have been itching to do another response video since I did the responses to the questions for the anti-SJWs. It was quite fun for me, uh, getting to express my opinion. Unfortunately, I have not had any of them respond back, but I don't think they would do that anyway. I'm going to be talking about someone who was in that response video, and that, of course, was Michael Rowland. He was the one with the 70s stash wearing the toga. <sighs> what can I say about this idiot? This is a video he did calling out Baring as a bully, which actually kind of inspired the last video that I put together. This, I'm I'm not going to be white knighting for Baring, I'm just going to be giving my opinion and responding to Michael Rowland and his stupidity. Um, so, I'm not going to go into the deep, dark backstory of what this has, because there's a lot to it. Uh, I'll put some relevant links in the description, uh, I'll even link some of Bering stuff, and I'll even put Michael Rowland's link in the description as well, since I'm going to be, you know, tagging him in this, per se, by putting his name, as you saw, in the description, and as well as the title. Let's get started, shall we? So, this is Michael Rowland talking about how Bering happens to be the biggest bully on the internet. Bering is a YouTuber whose channel is dedicated to criticizing people he finds to be disagreeable. He creates videos about various people and shares them with his 200,000 subscribers. That in itself is fine. I can live with that. If you can live with that, why are we only less than 20 seconds in and this video is a good five minutes? He makes response videos. So what? So do you. So do a hundred other people on the internet, on YouTube in particular, and I'm doing it now. What's the difference? But it is what happens afterwards that I find to be so intolerable. You'll find it intolerable. What I find intolerable is you're a man with over a thousand subscribers and I'm staring at a black screen while you're narrating. Bering has an influence over his subscribers, as many people with large fan bases do, and Bering uses that influence to bully and harass the people he doesn't agree with into silence. Bering has over 240,000 subscribers. All 240,000 plus of those subscribers are individual people. Unfortunately, for what you're about to say next, Bering has no bearing on what they do. Forgive the pun. Let's take a look at some examples, shall we? To start with, here are some examples of small channels. Notice how the views are low and they are pretty evenly distributed. So he gives these people views. He makes them money. Is that what this is about, really? He hasn't given you enough views over the interactions you two have had over the last, oh, month or so? Hmm. Seems quite suspect, don't you think? Now here's an example of a channel that Bering has targeted. Notice the views on the targeted video. They're disproportionately higher to the rest. Now notice the dislikes on the target of video. Again, disproportionately high. And the comments? Alright, first, I downloaded this video directly. I didn't go through the second party site or anything like that. I downloaded it so I could do this response. So if you can't read it, I apologize. That's not my equipment. It happens to be his video. Now let's talk about his two points. First one, the view. YouTube does not care about your subscriber list, does not care about the likes or dislikes on your video. It cares about how many views you get and how long they view your video. So bearing, according to you, sending his hundreds of thousands of followers to a specific video is hurting them. Because as you know, 
Fiora Bering speaks, and we goose step to the video that we need to downvote. And moving on to that, dislikes. There is a video on YouTube that is a sound, it's a warning sound, like an air siren. That alone has 2,000 dislikes. The dislike ratio doesn't mean anything unless you want it to mean something. And YouTube itself gives you the option of turning off the comments, like you did on the video that I'm presently responding to, and turn off the like and dislike ratios, which you happen to have disabled on the video I'm responding to. So, being uh, having a video dislike does not mean that it's not going to make you anything. It just means that the people listening to it don't like what you have to say. You can use it as criticism and maybe rethink what you're doing or you can use it as what most of these knee-jerk reactionaries use it as is everybody hates me you fucking moron Let's take a look at another. That was almost 30 seconds of dead air, where we get to watch you scroll through some comments. Relatively quickly as well, so if we wanted to read them, we have to pause the video. You know, you could just do what normal people do and read them out loud. And as for the commenters, it is a free country, they can say what they want. If the person who owns the video, who has the people commenting, they can delete them. Or turn off the comment section. But then, of course, they get accused of doing that. They could, you know, just stand by what they say. Or do what most of us have done and get a thicker skin. Are you kidding me? You want to be mollycoddled on the internet. Everybody has an opinion. And I learned this little quip from a friend of mine. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one and everyone else's stinks. It seems clear to me that in creating a video about another YouTuber, Bering influences his audience to view that original video. Jacques, are you kidding me? He actually wants people to go to the video so they can see the video in full and have some context into what he's saying? My god, I must clutch my pearls and fall back on the fainting couch. Please, someone, someone stop this insanity. It seems to me that in creating a video about another YouTuber, you, Michael, Try to influence your audience in going to see that original video. You see how that can be switched back and forth? It might be some time for you to get some introspection on your life, which you're about to give advice about. It also seems clear to me that once they are there, they spit hate, bile, and abuse all over the comment sections of these videos, as well as leaving thousands of dislikes. As far as I know, the internet is still protected by the First Amendment, whether you like it or not. And again, I state that the owner of the video can go through their comments and delete ones they don't like. Now, the dislikes don't matter. It only matters if you want to take it as everyone hates you. I have dislikes on my videos. Cole has dislikes on his. Here's the thing. It doesn't discourage him. And it doesn't discourage me. Bering has dislikes. Thousands of dislikes. But it doesn't discourage him. If the thought of dislikes are the only thing that are going to stop you from creating videos, get off of YouTube. Because that means your fragile ego won't be able to take it when people express their opinions. 
Any honest person would admit these things. So you're saying that you've never left a horrible comment on any video you've ever seen? I'd rethink your statement before you put your foot even farther in your mouth. Bering seems like a reasonably smart guy, so I would assume that he would agree that these things are true as well. The question is, is Bering responsible for this abuse? If Bering is responsible for his subscribers, then so are you. That means any of your thousands of subscribers going to any other video and leaving a horrible comment, you're just as responsible. Again, think about your statement before you put your foot farther in your mouth. Have you been able to taste your shoe leather yet? Because you're getting there. Is he responsible for something that he knows happens after he's done a thing? Is the fact that his intention, he claims, is not to incite hatred and promote abuse of people he disagrees with mean that he is, therefore, not responsible for this abuse and hatred? The short answer to your question is no, he's not responsible, because that means that he would be in charge of 242,000 plus people. He's not a business owner, or at least I don't think he's a business owner, and those 242 plus or thousand plus people are not employed by him, so they do not, he is not held responsible by them. Just like your subscribers are not able to hold you responsible for what they do. You keep talking about this like he is at fault. Anything that you say towards him can be used towards you. You're starting to do this do as I say, not as I do thing. And I'm sorry, the world does not work that way. Should he be allowed to remain apathetic towards the horrible things that happen in his name? Should a person be held accountable for their actions when it is painfully clear that those actions are causing other people harm, distress, or to be silenced? I'm under the impression that yes, he can remain as apathetic as he wants. What more do you want him from him? Him to say every five minutes, don't go bully the person I'm talking to, don't go leave mean comments, be nice? Well, since your video that I'm responding to currently is only five minutes or so long, you have yet to tell your subscribers not to go to Barry's channel and harass him. Again, when you point the finger, remember, there are three more pointing back at you. You are being accusatory towards somebody against things that you yourself do not do. It is not, and I'm going to state it again, it is not do as I say, not as I do. If a person gets drunk and drives their car into a crowd of people, killing and maiming dozens, should they be held responsible for something they knew could happen if they chose to drive drunk? Does the fact that their intention was not to harm these people matter in the slight? The problem with your analogy is twofold. One, stuff on YouTube and comments and things like that is a free speech issue. Drunk driving is not. The second problem, your analogy is completely misconstrued. Now, what you want to say is you're the passenger in that, not even the passenger, you're the bartender. Are you held responsible for the people who drink in your bar and then go drink and drive? If the answer is yes, that means every single owner of every single bar in the United States of America is a murderer. Whether it be murder one or manslaughter. So that's not possible because if I know, I know if I own a bar or I am a bartender, I am able to cut someone off. But at the same time, if I'm being told by my boss, no, keep the drinks flowing, my responsibility stops at the door. You are no longer in my establishment, you are responsible for your own actions. That is more of an akin to an analogy you should be using. Because that means the moment one of your subscribers goes to another video, they are stepping outside your door and they are not you are not responsible for what they do 
So in the same instance, neither is Barry. I I is that plain and simple enough for you? Have I mansplained it enough? Because your analogy is stupid. Just should they be allowed to remain apathetic towards the results of their choices and get behind the wheel and drive drunk again? No. Bearing is a bully, intentionally or not. Your analogy once again is wrong. Bearing is not a bully. He's an entertainer. Which brings up another decent fact. What that is, is that you're an entertainer as well. So, consider this. Miley Cyrus, I know, the bastion of femininity that she is, goes on record in her songs, stating they want she hates Justin Bieber, hates him with a fiery passion and wishes he would die. One of her fans then kills Justin Bieber. Is she responsible? The answer is no, because that's actually a legal concept that has come up. So, again, you're wrong. Bering claims that he is against the behavior exhibited by much of his audience, and he has stated it many times. That he has a disclaimer on his videos that discourages abuse and harassment, and yet it does not stop. And that fulfills his legal obligation. What more do you want him to do? I propose that if Bering actually cared about bullying and harassment, that he would make ongoing vocal pronouncements of his opposition to this behavior. He would Which is what his disclaimer is. ...would make it abundantly clear, as often as he could, that he is not okay with how his audience behaves. But I know that he won't. For and neither will you. Firstly, because he would take a massive hit to his subscriber base and his income. And secondly, because it would require intense self-reflection and a maturity level that I believe that he does not possess. I'm going to stop it here because the response is already going a lot longer than I wanted it to. This is a five minute something video and this is already going to be quite long and I apologize. He goes on and on and on about how Bering needs to take responsibility and then he gives the example that Bering, he knows Bering follows him on Twitter. He shared a video of a young girl spouting feminist rhetoric that he happened to like and he shared it on Twitter. Bering then responded with a winky face and then four hours later did a response video and then she got a ton of views a ton of dislikes and had to take the video down here's my issue one i will never close my comment section if you don't like what i have to say fine tell me if you do like what i have to say tell me too but i stand by what i say and if you prove me wrong in something I say, I will honestly apologize and I will say you are right. But I will never take down a video because I stand by what I say. Unfortunately, most of your side can't. Because as soon as you get proven wrong, oh no, I'm being harassed, the cyber violence is happening. You are nothing but babies. You call Bering a bully, you all are reactionary bullies. There are more instances of people on social media attacking others who are linked to your side, to the SJW side, to the feminist side, to the political correctness side, than our side. And every single time that we say, give us proof of this harassment, well, I deleted the tweets. Okay, did you report it to the police? No, because they don't do anything. How do you know? Did you try? Well, yes, I reported it. Did you? What's the police report? Give us the proof. You're making allegations that you can't back up. It sounds a lot like lying. And that's all I really have to say about Michael Rowland. All of his videos are more of the same. He spouts what he believes is true, is factual, and it's not. He had the opportunity to talk to a lawyer about 
the legalities of consent, the legalities of what was actually going on in the case of the TEDx, TEDx talk. And instead, he decided to hide and not talk to the lawyer. He specifically said that he would talk to Baring, but without the lawyer present. Why? Because he wants to hide in his bubble. He wants to know that it doesn't matter what the legality is, it's what he feels is right. And that's this whole movement, feels over reels. Michael Rowland is just another one that has jumped on the bandwagon trying to get what he feels to be law. It's not going to happen. And that's it. So thank you for listening, everyone. If you liked what I had to say, please hit like and subscribe. If you didn't like what I say, honestly, put it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. You can follow me on Facebook. I am part of the Help for the Guildless Facebook page. You can follow Cole on Twitch, Twitter, and Tumblr. And that's all. Please share me around, and I will definitely see you all next time. Have a good evening, everyone.